So now that we've learned how data in, in a binary format can be transmitted through waves, we want to look at now how we can take images and transmit it. So we're going to explain the representation of an image through binary with a series of pixels. So look at this picture. How might we encode this so that someone else could recreate the picture without seeing it? Since we've already kind of mentioned binary, you might automatically pick out we have a white and black square series. So we could say that the white is off or on, doesn't matter, and the black would be the other one. So if we say that the white is off, we could represent that with a zero. And if the black is, is on, we could represent that with a one. So we could say 0, 1, 1, 0 to represent this picture in binary. Now to store an image on a computer, the image is broken down into tiny little elements called pixels. A pixel is short for picture element, and it just represents one color of the picture. So the more pixels you have, the sharper your image. And that's what we talk about when we say resolution. So the more pixels on the screen, the higher the resolution of the image, the sharper it appears on our screen. So we have taken this picture and broken it down into 36 little pieces or pixels. And each square represents one pixel. So we call this a bitmap. So remember a bit is one little piece of information. So in this case, we're using a one bit representation. So this means that each pixel can be represented by either a one or a zero. The zero in this case will turn the pixel white while the one will turn the pixel black. So one bit representation gives us a monochrome picture. So in order for the computer to store the image, each pixel is represented by a binary value. We call this representation of colors a bitmap. So images are stored in scan lines. Each line is encoded from left to right and from top to bottom. So the image here would receive the following binary values. The top row is six zeros. So we would have zero, 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 zero. Zero, <laughs> I think. <laughs> I don't know, I lost track. The next row, we would have zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero. The third row would be 010010. Then we'd have 0000 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So we're scanning those bits and writing them in a line. So pause your video and on your paper, see if you can figure out what this bitmap represents picture wise. Did you get a heart? <laughs> this can be kind of tricky. Being able to follow those zeros and those ones and color in the correct ones can be kind of a challenge. Okay, now your computer does not break it up into chunks like that. We've done that to make it a little bit easier to see and to be able to, to put those <laughs> into our picture. A computer is just gonna receive a string of data. So something has to tell the computer how many blocks there are. So the bitmap has to be defined in some way. So one really interesting application for things like this is used by the SETI Institute, which is the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. They've actually spent the past 50 years or so scanning stars, looking for signals that could be messages from other civilizations. And they look for non-random patterns and data strings. And they send out non-random data strings. So all data content, as we know, can be encoded in binary strings. So before, we had everything kind of chunked together in a nice little grid, but we can't send it that way. The data strings can be sent, which are the product of two primes, so that the recipient can know that the dimensions of the rectangle in which to fill the colors. So the first thing that we would notice is that this string is 77 bits long, which is the product of two prime numbers, 7 and 11. So this gives us either a seven by 11 or an 11 by seven rectangular grid to fill. So again, pause, 
on your paper. Choose one of those and see what you get. Did you get a person? <laughs> if you chose the seven by 11 grid, then starting with those bits at the top, you would have two zeros, three ones, two zeros, two zeros, three ones, two zeros, and so on. And so you get a little stick person. So any civilization that might be interpreting this particular message would know that this is what we look like. So on your paper, try this one. Remember your first step is to count all of those numbers. So pause for a second and count. If you want to double check, it's 323. So now figure out what are the two prime numbers that you have to multiply together to get 323. If you found them yet. <laughs> so we get 17 times 19 or 19 times 17. And I'll give you a hint on this one. <laughs> the 17 is the across. So pause your video and go ahead and fill in your, your grid, a 17 by 19 grid, and see what picture you get. 